all over the world. Species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On the open plains, in the jungle underworld, and beneath desert skies, all are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the heart of Africa to the Himalayas, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. In the forests of India, the real king of the jungle attacks a sloth bear mom. But she is no easy meal. The sloth bear has an identity crisis. First thought to be a sloth, it acts more like an anteater. Its three-inch claws crack rock-hard earth to find termites. A gap in its front teeth helps suck them up. And its sloth-like shaggy coat shields against insect bites. Cubs live with mom for almost three years. And she's fiercely protective. But the forest hides deadlier foes than other bears. These deer are not alone. A Bengal tiger, 500 pounds of ambush assassin, can strike at 35 miles an hour and break a neck with a sudden bite. A hunt in 100 degrees is thirsty work for this prime male. But someone else wants a drink. A three-year-old sloth bear cub. To the tiger, he's cat food. But it won't come cheap. Mom throws herself in harm's way. The predator's fangs search for her neck. But Mom squirms free. At less than half his weight, she has to go big. When threatened, sloth bears charge and stand tall to intimidate. It's a bluff. And it works for now. Mom must make sure he doesn't sneak back. She risks her own life to protect her cub but pushes the cat too far. His lightning reactions are hardwired. In a tiger's nervous system, the neurons are supersized with massive branches. So they send signals to the muscles extremely fast, which gives the cat incredible reaction speeds. He has a bone crunching 1000 pound bite but those three-inch canines are sensitive. A network of pressure-sensing nerves means he can precisely locate the kill spot at the spinal cord just by feeling with his fangs. If his teeth find their target, she's dead. Her cub can only watch. The tiger tires. 
Mom seizes her moment. She has inch and a half killer fangs. And her rock cracking claws can be lethal. She's injured, but drives the predator back. The ambush assassin again calls her bluff. A tiger can swipe with 10 times the force of a heavyweight boxer. But he's unbalanced and just tags skin. This bear ain't worth the fight. Nature's battles aren't always won by size. It's the risks you're prepared to take. Sticking together can improve your odds. Alone, you could be a dead dog walking. Winter in Yellowstone can hit minus 60. And no one wants to be left out in the cold. In a coyote pack, only the alphas hold breeding rights. But this young rebel wants to mate. The alpha male sees him. He'll banish rule breakers from the clan. It's the coyote code. The outcast must leave the territory and go solo. On its own, a coyote's survival rate almost halves. But he strikes gold, a deer carcass. Except it's under guard. from North America's biggest raptor. The Golden Eagle is a 200 mile an hour assassin. Her beak is keratin covered bone, hooked to rip flesh. She'll take on prey up to six times her size. So a lone coyote is in trouble. The outcast launches a surprise attack. He's three times her weight, but she has a killer advantage. Seven-foot wingspan powers razor-tipped flying kicks. Powerful muscles in an eagle's legs can exert a force of up to 400 pounds, three times stronger than a human hand. The grip is near unbreakable. Segmented tendons in the toes lock the talons in place, like a lethal zip tie. The coyote takes the risk. Just one scrap of meat could be life-saving. 
But she blocks him at every turn. The coyote can't win against the ratchet clawed guard. The eagle keeps its prize. The outcast needs a meal soon. Or he too could become bird food. The Himalayas, home of the mythical Yeti, and the hunting grounds of a real ghost. The Snow Leopard. She's the apex predator of a territory that rises nearly 20,000 feet. Against rock, her camouflage makes her all but disappear. She's after Ibex. But makes a mistake. She's exposed on snowy ground. The Ibex spotter. Her cover's blown. In this harsh environment, only one in five of a snow leopard's hunts ends with a kill. She'll survive off a carcass for up to four days and only hunt less than once a week, a tactic that conserves energy but means every kill is critical. The ghost finds another target. A barrel. She's a 100-pound prize. But she has her own deadly defense strategy. Specialized split hooves help barrel scale near vertical cliffs. So they graze close to cliff edges to give them a fast escape route and lure enemies into danger. This time, the leopard learns. She stalks low against the rocks, then pounces and makes a deadly error. sprint, the leopard's own momentum takes them both over the edge of a 400-foot drop. They stay locked in mortal combat. The leopard hits powder at over 40 miles an hour. The barrel tries her downhill getaway strategy. But the leopard digs in. Her prey may be a mountain escape artist, but she is a free fall specialist. The midsection of a cat's spine has three more vertebrae than a human's with highly elastic discs. This helps them twist their body in midair to adopt free fall position an ability known as the aerial writing reflex. By flattening out, they can increase their surface area and their drag. And their long muscular legs can absorb more energy on impact. So the barrel may be a goner, but the ghost lives on with a prize that will keep her going for another week.
when your gang is over a thousand strong. Making decisions ain't easy. But Cape Buffalo have it covered through peace or war. When it's time to travel, females favor the democratic approach and vote. There's no ballot box on the Serengeti. So they stand up, each facing the direction they want to move in. Majority rules. Problem amicably solved. Males, on the other hand, can be less diplomatic. A waterhole is everyone's favorite place to chill. But a band of bachelor buffalo are about to change the vibe. Fresh from his mud bath, Dirty Harry thinks he's the boss. While Mr. Clean over here has other ideas. At stake, mating rights in a herd. Mr. Clean and Dirty Harry stride parallel to check out what each other's packing. They're well matched, 50-50. But Mr. Clean wants to improve his odds. With a sneak attack. He meets almost a ton of resistance. Dirty Harry readies for a face-off. But Mr. Clean doesn't feel lucky and backs away. Too late. Harry's pumped for a fight. A bull can drive forwards with the force of a pickup truck. Caught sideways, Mr. Clean can't push back. Another bull takes a ringside seat. It distracts Dirty Harry, while Mr. Clean brings out his magnums. A four-inch thick battering ram with three foot-long hooks, sharp enough to gore the throat. Harry finds traction to unleash his trademark move. He drives his opponent sideways, off balance, and out of contention. Head high, chin out, Dirty Harry shows he's boss. And when the next herd moves through, Harry gets the girls. Survival is a balance between risk and reward. A leopard weighs up her odds. Impala. 100 pounds of protein-rich meat. But faster than her by 10 miles an hour. If it goes wrong, it's energy wasted. So it's an expensive gamble. In her favor, 
Night vision, six times more effective than a human's. And her strategy, stealth, gets her close. The gamble pays big. Expert climbers, leopards take their winnings high up in trees, where they can't be reached by scavengers. Unless that scavenger is another leopard. This prowler prefers to let someone else do all the work. And then steal the prize. If she can. The thief scores a morsel. But what she wants is a share of the main course. But so do other deadlier thieves. It's now a fight on three fronts. The leopards are not alone. Spotted hyena. Their large numbers and bone-crushing bite usually stack the odds in their favor, even against leopards. They're also clever opportunists. They sense trouble brewing and a chance for a low-energy, low-risk reward. In an animal's brain, a large frontal cortex is believed to aid social communication and problem solving. The spotted hyenas is highly developed, on par with some of our close primate cousins. So they're not just here to watch, they've got a game plan. They know a leopard fight over prey could mean falling scraps of meat. Above them, the thief sounds a warning. But it falls on deaf ears. Her only course now is war. The hunter defends with both sets of retractable claws. The thief's off balance. The hyena, wait. Another swipe. And the thief's down. But the hyena don't want her. The hunter took her paws off the prize and lost it. The hyena plan pays off. Minimum risk. Maximum reward. On the African battleground, everyone sees the big guns. But the most effective weapon can be a concealed carry. Red-billed quilia, one of the most destructive birds in the world. One point five billion roam sub-Saharan Africa and devour sixteen thousand tons of vegetation every day. But while mom and dad gather food, day-old chicks are defenseless. Far below,
a battalion of armored ground crickets. Harmless hoppers, they ain't. They're also hungry. The crickets are heavy-duty assassins. A powerful bite turns prey into mincemeat. While a tough exoskeleton and thorax spikes shield them from predators. And they have an incredible secret weapon. They'll devour almost anything, even baby birds. Hearing organs in the cricket's knees sense the chick's movements. And lead them to lunch. Not so fast. Mom's beak can pierce insect flesh. But he's armor-plated and deals his secret ace. Chemical warfare. The ground cricket has a gruesome defense strategy. It has no blood vessels. Instead, its heart pumps its blood freely around the body. So when a special seam in its leg joint opens, it shoots a high pressure jet of acrid blood at any target within two and a half inches. This deters predators and can even temporarily blind them. Eyes full of blood, mom can't see. But she's not done. The cricket's tough exoskeleton saves him. But the smell of his chemical weapon attracts more hungry mouths. His own army turns on him. These crickets are cannibals. Facing death, prey must make a split-second decision between flight, fight, or fright. On the Serengeti, a lioness strays from her pride and spies prey, an olive baboon. But even against a predator over five times his size, this Braveheart won't go down without a fight. An olive baboon is no pushover. From just six years of age, a male is battle ready. He roams from troop to troop to avoid inbreeding, but faces fierce competition for females at every stop. He uses aggressive scare tactics to drive off rivals. The roar grunt. The threat yawn which bears fangs that can grow even longer than a lion's. And his ace? A kamikaze charge. Baboons also use their scare tactics to frighten off predators.
but a lioness loves a baboon buffet. She usually hunts as part of a team and uses ambush tactics to take down prey up to a ton. The lioness tries a sneak attack. But Braveheart pushes back. For a 280 pound predator, 50 pounds of monkey meat is a square meal. But no dish is worth a face full of fang. His scare tactics seem to work. He could quit while he's ahead and run, but he just keeps on pushing. He tries a threat yawn. This time, Threats won't help him. The lioness is head of an ambush squad. They take both flanks to corner their prey. The Braveheart baboon pushed too far. Even for scavengers, a free lunch is too good to be true. In the Namib desert, a stink's in the air. A Gemsbach carcass. 10 pounds of protein-rich meat still cling to its bones. It sends a tempting scent for miles. Black-backed jackal and her daughter search for food. Her nose is thousands of times more sensitive than a human's and picks up rotting flesh from over a mile away. Jackals have a special structure in their nose that humans lack. It's a maze of channels that helps it detect chemicals that we can't even sense and analyze them in extraordinary detail. Each nostril can take in independent scent samples, which helps the jackal zero in on the source of the smell. Even the stench of rotting meat doesn't mask a new scent. Tail down, ears flick. Mom's uneasy. Another jackal, and she's hungry. Today, lunch will come at a price. A 4,000-calorie prize is just enough to keep mom and daughter going for another two days. But the newcomer wants a share of their meal. This could go either way. Resident jackals sometimes allow newcomers a seat at their table. They can smell if they're related. If not, the intruder can be sent home with a savage souvenir. Mom's nose will tell her if the stranger is family or not. A raised paw is a peace offering. But mom won't share. <laughs> the 
The intruder urinates, a sign she's stressed. Jackals target the throat to kill. Mom takes the ear. It's a canine attack strategy that says, back off. The intruder tries to loosen mom's grip and aim for her jugular. Mom drives the message home. And it sticks. Mom and daughter reap their reward. The intruder goes hungry, but gets away intact. Scraps over meat may get bloody, but when your whole turf's at stake, it's war. In the meerkat kingdom, the queen reigns supreme. Fierce rulers, they're more aggressive than the males. With three times the testosterone, This queen is the ultimate working mom. She feeds her young and commands a 30-strong army. As sole breeder, the size of her army is a sign of her success. She's pregnant and won't fight. So her troops will defend with 11 different alarm calls that help identify the enemy and threat level. Their code red is a rival clan. A marauding mob wants to expand its territory. With the queen out of action, it could be the perfect time to strike. The home guard spots them. They'll defend queen and country with their lives. They line up. Tails like banners. An intimidation tactic to avoid a costly war. Meerkats may look cute, but they'll fight to the death. They're even known to kill a rival clan's pups. The marauders attack. Their canines target the home guard's throats. Advantage, Marauders. Without their fierce queen, the home guard could lose everything. It's first blood to the Marauders. But the queen has greater numbers. They overturn the enemy. One of her soldiers aims a parting shot. The chewed tail proves the final blow. The marauders fall back. It's a white flag. With strength in numbers, the queen secures her kingdom. In the jungle underworld, there's a biological weapon. So devastating, 
that some believe it defies evolution. A lumbering giant looks for lunch, but finds other hunters. Foraging ants in attack mode. The beetles 60 times their size. But they call in backup from a near indestructible army. Ants have survived for about 140 million years. They lived through the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. A hardened chitin exoskeleton protects them. But the real secret to their success is their organization. They live in million strong colonies, but can behave like a single organism. Some even unite and form rafts to survive floods. It makes for an army of hyper-efficient killers. Foragers divide into specialized units. If the first unit finds large prey, it releases chemical trails for backup to follow. These foragers send their message. The beetle is on borrowed time. But it has its own message. Total annihilation. It's a bombardier beetle. One of a family of insects with 200 degree toxic chemicals in their arsenal. Some people believe this weapon is too complex to have evolved naturally. The spray is so hot it should cook them alive from the inside out. But evolution has an answer to everything. Inside the beetle, two types of gland produce two different chemicals. They're harmless until released together into a reinforced chamber. As the chemicals combine, to form a toxic cocktail. The reaction heats it to boiling point. Pressure caused by the heat blasts the spray out in 500 pulses per second, and each pulse allows the chamber to cool so the beetle doesn't burn up. It can even rotate its cannon 270 degrees for precision firepower. chemical spray burns an ant's tough chitin exoskeleton. Even nature's doomsday survivors can't handle a bombardier's biological warfare.